Hey, this is Alex. We're back with the You Change It lock. Um, I was able to get it all back together. Um, actually, it wasn't too bad. Um, and uh, it does, again, work with the, whoops, with the key. That's my launch, I think. Okay, and I thought I would, uh, before we go into the analyzing the bypass that many of you know about, I thought we'd sort of look at how it works normally. Um, so the whole idea of this system is that you, you put your key, your existing key in, you turn this thing 90 degrees to the uh, clockwise, so to sort of to the three o'clock position. And if you remember, there are all those little cams inside on each chamber, these little, uh, these little guys um, here, which are now facing up and can move up into the Bible. So now when we take this tool, and this is one that I made from a tension uh, a tensor, but um, you could make one out of anything, and I think the ones they sell that come with that are just pieces of wire. That goes in there, and now what that has done is pulled all of the uh, little retaining clips back on the, um, on the pins um, so that they can now float. So now I can actually take the key, if I got it aligned properly, I can get the key, take the key completely out and put a different key in, at which time the um, the pins will adjust to the, the size of the new key, or the, uh, the bidding of the new key. Put that in, um, take, the, uh, take the tool out, and um, put it all back together, and, and turn it back to lock, and I'm done. So it's kind of a nice system from that, in that perspective. So I've got to take this thing out, and then lock it up, and there it is. So it's now, again, working with this key. I unfortunately don't have, I'm trying to make a key for this, but the blanks, blank, blanks are kind of weird and I haven't found one that was reliable enough to work yet. Um, so, um, let's, uh, let me set up another uh, view here and let's take a look at how we, uh, how people have been able to cleverly exploit the mechanism that allows us to do this um, to actually bypass the law completely. Okay, so here is a, um, a U change lock. A, not the same one we had in the other video, but um, you know, another, they're all the same um, on the inside. Um, and what I've done is I've taken the plug out and I've removed the cams, and I've got um, four of the key pin assemblies in here intact, and one of them just the outer pin. Um, so, by the way, if you haven't watched my uh, number, th the third video in this series, I did a uh, sort of an anatomy of these things, um, so you can see uh, the names of all these parts. Um, so the way that this would work is that if the if the proper key were inserted, and we rotated the lock to ninety to uh, uh, ninety degrees as we did in the um, example. So for example, that pin would be at that level at shear. Okay, and what would happen is that when I insert this tool it comes in, it has like a little bevel on it, and it's able to reach in behind. I'm not actually going to do it because things tend to go flying, but it's actually able to reach in behind and pull the T-pin out. I'm coming from the back, but it doesn't really matter. Um, that guy's in the way. But come from the back and pull the T-pin out, at which time now the inner pin is able, is, is able to move up and down and change the, uh, the depth of the bidding. And of course the little cam at that point that little cam part would be sticking out by some amount, kind of like that, up into the Bible. Okay, and then that cam is exactly what ensures that when you rotate back, um, everything goes back in place. Now, very clever design, um, and they've sold a lot of these things, but let's call attention to the flaw in this design. Now, on the left here, um, this pin, I've, t I've taken out the T-pin, so you can see just what the, the outer pin looks like. And you can see there's this sort of squarish bit with a hole in it, and that rests down on um, part of the plug, on the milling. And every single one of these pins, this part is the same size. 
Okay, so if I took all of these apart and put them in here like this, they would all look exactly like this and they'd sit at this height. So the only thing that changes is the length with, from the top of this to the bottom of the inner pin, right? So the inner pin moves in and out, right? But the the top of this doesn't doesn't change, right? With respect to this hole, right? So um, some clever person, and I think it's Locksmith Army, but uh, it was referred to as Lauren A. on the Peterson site where they sell the, the bypass tool, which I don't own. Um, but some clever person realized this and realized that regardless of what the um, combination is, if you press this up that, that far, regardless of what the combination is, it will put the pin at shear. And it turns out that that is about twice the thickness of the little um, hole that you have here. Um, so the, that leads to the, the funny shape of the bypass tool. You can see that with just the tool in, or just the, uh, um, the recombination tool in here, it doesn't quite reach shear. It's like one differ off. Um, but that little tool has a little nub that rotates up and is able to sort of pry that up high enough to, uh, to reach the shear line. And it does that for all of them. And so you immediately open the lock and you can do whatever you need to do um, because you basically have a, a fixed point of reference um, regardless of what the, what, how the, what the keying is set to or the combination is set to. Um, so as far as I know, all of these locks have this vulnerability. Um, and so they can all be open with that little tool that you can buy from Peterson for, um, I don't know, $50, something like that. Um, or make yourself, I suppose. In fact, I could probably turn this little guy into one of those tools with a little bit of patience. The tolerances on these are really close, though. Um, you're talking, you know, they're, they're very precise. I've, tried to, I've actually even tried to make keys for this, and it's absolutely unforgiving. Um, but, um, uh, but it can be done. So... Um, you know, if I were these guys, I think they've got a actually kind of a neat design. And if they used a variety of sizes of the, uh, the outer pen, um, if they varied the size of these things by some amount, um, or varied the position of this little, um, boss with respect to the rest of it, then they would actually get around this issue. Um, and they, you know, the, you could, that would make, render that bypass tool inoperative. Um, but in the meanwhile, um, you're kind of screwed if you've got one of these. So there we go. Um, so that's the U change lock. Um, this is what a semi legitimate one looks like. Um, the other one that I had, that we did the picking video of was this KSC, which I don't know what that stands for, but some rebranding of it, but it's exactly the same on the inside. So that's how it works. I hope you enjoyed this series. Um, this is Alex. Have fun, and as always, please keep it legal. Cheers.